Hi everyone, it's Cameron, and I'm going to run through some of the requirements that not only Augusta Tech, but SACS and federal financial aid folks have for instructor participation on discussion boards um, and discussion board requirements for hybrid and online classes. This is one of the primary tools that separates distance ed classes from correspondence classes. And that's a distinction that um, determines whether a class is eligible for financial aid, for students to use financial aid to take the class. And so in um, SAC COC terminology, hybrid and online classes both count as distance ed classes. And so even hybrid classes need to have weekly discussion boards. Um, and so we'll just run through this quickly. It's in DEIR if you want to go back and read all of the lesson. Here is a student's perspective on discussion boards. to the discussion board for the other students to give us feedback, um, which is great. All right, so that's one way that she keeps from feeling isolated in her online class. All right, so um, in this document, we have that at least one discussion forum per unit is required. Since this policy was written, we have learned that the feds require instructor participation every week on a discussion board. And so the number of discussions is not the issue. Um, whether they're in units per se is not the issue but that you as an instructor have the opportunity to participate and interact with students on the discussion board every week is the issue. And so you could have um, four discussions running for three weeks each or running for the whole semester each, as long as you're requiring students to add new content every week and respond to other students every week and um, as long as you as the instructor are also in there every week. And um, you certainly don't want to reply to every post because then that will stifle the student's interaction. Um, you want to pick one or two students per week to respond to and pick different students each week so you're not always picking on or praising the same students. All right, so um, the discussion topic must be academic. It must address the learning outcomes of the course, not work ethics or, um, you know, chat and have coffee or um, the place for student questions. Those are all great forums to include, but they just don't count as instructor-led learning in a class that the feds are looking for. Um, and they must be graded and they must count in the average, which is another reason you can't use the work ethics or the questions. Um, and students need to be required to respond to other students as well as to the topic because the feds are also looking for student-student interaction. And um, this is the easy, obvious way to show them that you have it if anybody comes looking. And um, the student looked forward to the weekly interaction with her classmates on the discussion board. And the icebreaker discussion is always enjoyable for students to get to know other students in the class, you know, a little bit more personal about them than they do in the academic discussions. And so it's a good one to include, although it doesn't um, count, again, as instructor-led instruction. Um, so 
the students do need clear guidelines and expectations in advance of each discussion. Um, is there a length requirement? Um, do they have to support their opinion with something from the text? Does spelling count? Are they allowed to take information from Wikipedia? Can they copy and paste it? Um, and what about the replies to other students? Does good job count? Um, is the reply to a student due the same day as the reply to a topic? All right, so there should be something in advance of the discussion which lays out all of the guidelines for them. And the Blackboard rubrics take a few minutes to set up in advance, but then once you have them set up, um, to grade the discussions, you just click on the score that you want to give the student. And the student has this clear um, response to why he or she got the grade that he or she did. So, um, and you can post the rubrics in advance so that students can see what their grade will be if, um, you know, say they're missing quotes from the reading in their replies. All right, and then instead of a formal Blackboard rubric, which um, you use to grade, you can just post an informal rubric in the instructions if that's your preference. But when you have a few extra minutes, it might be worth it just to turn this informal rubric into a formal rubric to save time on the grading end. Um, because another thing that the feds want to see is your feedback to students every week. And so when you have these explanations in there, that does count as feedback. All right. Um, obviously, students have at least seven days to complete any online assignment. And... Um, so, ooh. Um, anyway, a, a discussion will be open for at least seven, seven days, um, but you could keep them open longer. It is a little bit harder to track student participation over, over several weeks, but you will get more participation and deeper discussions from it. And that's an example of one that's being carried over several weeks. Um, Flipgrid does embed into Blackboard, and so it can count as um, discussions that course reviewers can look at. Um, and so you can allow your students to do video discussions as long as, again, you are in there participating as well. And um, they can see the feedback that you leave here, too. And so it's a good way to incorporate feedback into your communication with students. All right. So question, the number of discussion posts in all Augusta Tech Blackboard classes by the sixth week of the semester is what? because we have great instructors and students. They participate a lot. And so by week six, we usually have about 9,000 posts on classes at Augusta Tech, Blackboard classes at Augusta Tech. Very cool. All right. Um, also, to encourage student engagement, you can use alternate technologies, encourage them to record something on SoundCloud and embed it in the discussion board. Um, Flipgrid will have another webinar or another e-lessing on using, using Flipgrid, but students like that because they can just pick up their phone, video their response um, to a topic, and embed it right into Blackboard. And so that makes it very easy for them to participate in the discussion. And they also like to see who their classmates are. 
Um, here are some other ideas for discussion topics that encourage participation. And so again, this lesson is in DEIR. There's a link to it on the announcements page. Um, if you want to go back and look through these lessons and look through these examples.